Oh, uh, hey everybody, just doing a little reading up here, getting ready for this week's video. Uh, my friend Kyle, the man with no chin, asked me to do a video on the Red Scare. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Red Scare is a time when the uh, Americans lashed out against communism with uh, government uh, trials and hearings and arrests, even executions in some instances. It got pretty extreme. It was a clear violation of the First Amendment in some ways, just actually stomping out a political party within the United States. And the one most people know is in the took place from the late 40s to the mid 50s. However, that's not the only Red Scare in the history of the United States. Yes, there were actually two Red Scares. So this topic is going to require two videos, one for the first Red Scare, one for the second Red Scare. So let's start with the very first Red Scare. Now, that was, so this one is the one I think most people have kind of forgotten about, but it took place from 1919 to 1920 and did a lot to color American perceptions of communism and the ideas behind it. See, how this one came about comes from several factors. First and foremost was that communism kind of became a thing post-World War I. Now, before World War I, it existed, people knew about it, and it was associated with anarchy, but it wasn't really anything anybody spent a lot of time thinking about because it didn't have control anywhere. But now, Russia had fallen to communism. It was seen as a abysmal place. In fact, the United States was so against the Russian communist government that they actually sent troops to aid the rebels after World War One, that's right. The white Rus the white Russians, those fighting the red Russians, though they needed support in the United States, actually did that. Then the French and the British all sent troops. Uh, Americans have kind of forgotten this, but that's kind of where the Russians and Americans got off to a bad start. Uh, the communist government didn't forget that we sent troops against them. So there's that factor. Most Americans were against the idea of a communist government anywhere, even in Russia. Secondly, the Attorney General A. Mitchell Palmer. He's someone you probably haven't heard of, but this fighting Quaker was very important. He was very zealous in going after leftists, as he saw them, communists especially, um, anarchists, foreign people, anybody really. He was actually somewhat ethnically biased, uh, maybe possibly even racist. And honestly, Palmer had a little extra push because as he was starting to push back against these groups, somebody put a bomb on his front porch, blew up his porch, injured him, and he became a massive anti-communist from this point forward. Also, one of the more interesting factors was that his, one of his deputies, a man who cut his teeth on the first Red Scare, J. Edgar Hoover. Yes, he learned how to bring people out, arrest, build up trials, build cases from A. Mitchell Palmer and the first Red Scare. Now, there's a third factor involved in this Red Scare as well. At the time, unions were becoming very strong. The progressive era before World War I had really pushed unions into a place of prominence. It allowed labor to have a voice in the world for once. The American businessman was a little nervous about this. They were afraid the profits were going to be cut into too much. So they quickly tied together the idea of the union and communism. That's where, when you hear these concepts, this is where it comes from. Communism and unions don't necessarily have anything to do with each other, though there are some associations loosely based. But the business world was all too quick to tie the two together. Americans were already afraid, right? I mean, Russia had fallen to communism. Palmer's porch was blown up by communists. They must be very bad people. So the business community, in an effort to really push back the unions, really did the job tying the two things together. Communism and unions. Whether they were actually associated or not is a point of debate. In fact, there's a lot of points to say that they didn't have much to do with each other in the long run. There was also a surge of patriotism. Remember, this is post-World War I. So, after these big wars, the United States tends to get a little xenophobic. Foreign concepts, uh, they want to be pushed out of the country by certain groups. And the United States also tends to become more conservative post-wars. I can really point to uh, times in post-World War II, Vietnam, even the Civil War. There was really a, a sense of not wanting to meddle in things. And these people were seen as meddlers. Communists were trying to mess up the natural order. Uh, the American Legion, for instance, is one group that came up very patriotic and very much against communism. So this first Red Scare, though short, 1919 to 1920, was a time of great zeal and forever branded communism as a party that was unacceptable in the United States. It would always associate the Russians as the other, as long as they were under communism, and really was a time of incredible hysteria, but short-lived. So some people have sort of forgotten it in a way, but it is very important to the idea of the United States' association with communism as a whole. People here don't like it, and a lot of it is rooted here in this first Red Scare. 
I didn't feel I could adequately talk about the second one without really emphasizing the points of this first one. A. Mitchell Palmer, Russian Communism, Big Business. Those three things fueled an hysteria that is really carried through all the way to today, considering how the United States still feels about the Communist Party and the whole concept of communism. Well, I guess I'll cut it off there for now, and we'll talk about the second Red Scare next time on Historical Perspective.